has the camera frozen yet? It's been really good. Oh, it's yeah. Just, uh, okay, so today we're looking at 9.8, and the difference with today's lesson and the previous lesson is um, one word, which is. Uh, well, it's this. So before we had, what's this mathematician's name? McLaurin. What's his first name? Did you just say Tyler? Oh, Colin. 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 Okay. How about how about Taylor? Brooke. Brooke. That's right. Colin and Brooke. Um, so in the previous lesson, we looked at polynomials, right? So we looked at McLaurin polynomials, which is centered at zero and Taylor polynomials, which is not necessarily. It could be centered at zero, but it doesn't always have to be. And today we're going to look at series. So what is a series? Um, basically, instead of terminating it at n, so with polynomials, you're terminating it at n, but then with um, the series, you are taking it and going to infinity. That's the difference. So it's a very, very slight difference. But so instead of having an upper index that is n, it'll be an upper index that is infinity. So now instead of calling it McLaurin and Taylor polynomials, we'll call it as McLaurin and Taylor series. series. Yep, so they're called series. Okay, so the definition of this is really similar to what we had before. So let me just um, go to what we had here. So with this one here, we're starting off with first term, second term, all the way to the nth term. And so this is centered at zero. And then the p Taylor polynomial, it's going to be centered at c. And your book is calling it x sub zero. And then now what we're doing is we're looking at it as instead of starting from uh, zero and going out to n, it's going to go from zero out to infinity. So that upper index is now going to become infinity. And so when you're uh, looking at, now these are the Taylor series, everything is identical from here. You have your first term, second term, third term, all the way to the kth term. And then to make it as a series, to make it go to infinity, you say a plus and then dot, dot, dot. Right, so that's the distinction. Before we didn't have this. We covered this up and then we had an n right here. Now we're going to open it up and put plus, dot, dot, dot. So these are called Taylor series. Taylor series, and then this is where you have it centered at some other number, uh, not necessarily at zero. And with a special case where uh, x sub zero is equal to zero, then you have the case where this is going to be <coughs> as k is equal to zero out to infinity here. And so this is going to be infinity. So you have your first term, second term, all the way out to the kth term, and plus dot, dot, dot. All right, so very slight difference. So I've highlighted what's different here and right here. And so this is called our McLaurin series. McLaurin series. Okay, so the only thing that is, um, has changed is the upper index is infinity instead of what we used to have as n. And you want to note that the nth McLaurin and the Taylor polynomials, polynomials, are actually the nth partial sum. So it is, um, so the series has the uh, polynomial and more, right? So it's the nth partial sum. So for corresponding McLaurin and Taylor series. All right, now on Blackboard, I've asked you to copy um, these here. So for today, you should have copied this McLaurin series here and then these four here. Okay, so. You should memorize these four. Right? These four come up so much that it's just not worth it every single time to generate this over and over again. So I showed, showed you uh, e to the x in the previous class period along with sine of x, cosine of x, and 1 over 1 minus x. Um, and so this is going to occur so frequently that it's well, well worth your time to memorize it. Um, if you have capacity, you could memorize more. If you wanted another one to memorize, you should memorize the natural log of x. That's a good one. And then also tangent of x. Right? But these are the ones that come up the most frequently. Okay, so um, it says to use sigma notation to write the Maclaurin series for the function. And I'm not going to generate them. I'm just going to go by what I hope that you're going to become familiar with. So e to the x is equal to, and then just write a sigma notation. 
and then just leave a blank and then say equals. So uh, the expansion for e to the x is it starts off with 1 and then add on x and then plus x squared over 2 factorial. And if you just said 2, that's fine too. 2 factorial and 2 mean the same thing. Plus and then x to the third over 3 factorial plus dot, 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 all the way to, and I'll say the kth term. So looking at this pattern, what would the kth term be? x to the k over k factorial. Okay, so up to that point, that would be a Maclaurin polynomial. How do you make it a series? You just say plus and then what? Dot, dot, dot. That's what makes it as um, a series. So whatever you have stated right here is exactly what's going to go right here. Okay. So the kth term on this, the general term, is exactly what goes right near the, right after the sigma notation. So it's going to be x to the k over k factorial. And then you need to put your lower index. So the letters have to match up. Whatever you use in your general term has to be the variable that you're going to be, or the constant that you're going to be using with this. So it should be k is equal to 0. And then since we're talking about series, it would go up to infinity. Okay, so that would be the expansion for e to the x. This is the sigma notation, and this is the actual series that I have written out. So generally, if they ask you to write a series about 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 or 5, that's enough, and then you do plus dot, 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 plus the general term, plus, and then dot, dot, dot. Okay, so how about for sine? So for sine, it's going to equal, you're going to have some uh, notation, summation notation, leave a blank there and make that a little bit uh, wider space because that has a little bit more than our previous. So sine is a, what type of a function? It's an odd function. And so just think of an odd function as you're going to start off with a sine of zero. What's a sine of zero? Zero. So that constant is not there. So the very first thing that begins with is x. And then sine alternates, so then you'll have plus, or I'm sorry, minus, and then you do all the odd powers after that. So what would the next power be? X to the third, uh -huh, x to the third and then it's going to be factorial, so 3 factorial. And then you'll have a alternates plus, the next one will be a fifth power, and then that would be a 5 factorial. I'll go one more, minus x to the seventh and then seven factorial and then I'll do my plus all the stuff in between and now I'll do my general term so as an alternator you're always going to have your negative one and you're going to raise it to the k power so this is always going to be the alternator for both the sine and the cosine yes question no this is just sine of x just sine of x because the when I write out the general it's going to just um, incorporate all the odd powers. So I don't want any even powers in there. Well, let's write this out. Okay, so if I want to incorporate all of the odd powers, it would be what? Um, yes. Yeah, go ahead. Why is there, um, for A, why is there, why does it start with 1 plus and then for B it starts with X? Um, it has to do with the fact that f of x is equal to e to the x. So if I do f of 0, it'll be e to the 0, which is 1. Um, and then and then when you plug in 1? Uh-huh. No, I'm not, plugging, I'm not plugging in 1. I'm putting in 0 for all the derivatives. Oh, okay. Because this is a Maclaurin, meaning that it's going to be at 0, centered at 0. Okay. All right. So what is the power if it's an odd power? Uh huh. It'll be a 2k. That would be an even, and then I want to make it odd, so it'll be a plus one. And notice that the power and what is in the denominator are always the same. So then, in the denominator, you're going to have 2k plus one, and then you'll have your factorial. Okay. So that's going to represent my general. And so this right, and then I need to make it a series. So it's plus, and then dot dot dot. So you have this right here, which is going to be exactly what I'm going to place right here. And so you'll have your negative 1 raised to the k power and then x raised to the 2k plus 1 divided by 2k plus 1 factorial. And then you're going from k is equal to 0 out to infinity. Now, the sign will work out. So if I, for example, if I put in 0 right, right here, I'll have negative 1 to the 0 power and then this is going to be um, x raised to the first power, which will give me an x 
And so that sign does work out. Okay, so that's going to be a positive. All right, next one. How about the, for the cosine? So the cosine will be equal to, I have a sigma notation. And then for sine, <laughs> or for cosine, this is a, what type of a function? Even. Even. Okay, so, and I always, um, once you get the first term, it's a lot easier to get the rest. So what is cosine of zero? One. So I know it starts with a one. Here, sine of zero is zero, so that's why it's going to start with the next term, which is just going to be a x. All right now, I start alternating the signs, so it'll be a minus. So now I want all my even powers, so then the next term is going to be x to the second power divided by 2 factorial, and then alternate plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial, minus x to the sixth over 6 factorial, I'll stop there, plus dot, 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 plus. And it's very similar to this generalization with my alternator, negative 1 to the k. But now I want only evens. How do I get just evens? Okay. Yep. x to the 2k power, and then divided by 2k factorial plus dot, dot, dot. So that gives me my general term on this. So this right here is going to be exactly what I place right here. So it'll be as k is equal to 0 out to infinity, and then negative 1 raised to the k power, x raised to the 2k power, all over 2k quantity factorial. And make sure you make it as a parenthesis around both the 2 and the k. All right, now for the last one, this is a, a formula for the sum of a geometric series. All right. Can you tell me the general sum of a geometric series? This is from section uh, 9.3. A over, yes, 1 minus R. All right, so think of this. It's very, very similar to this, where A is equal to 1 and where R is equal to X. A is equal to 1 and R is equal to X. So this is going to equal summation, leave a space, equals... So my first term is 1. If my common ratio is x, we just need to multiply x to every previous term. So the next term will be x. What would the next term be? x squared. Next term? x to the third plus dot, dot, dot. So what's the general term on that? x to the k and beyond. Okay, plus dot, dot, dot. So then that will give me my uh, kth term. So this right here is going to become uh, x to the k is what will go right here. So this will be x to the k power as k goes from 0 out to infinity. This one, because it's a geometric series. Yeah. Um, and all of these, you can do it the long way. So the long way of doing it is how we did it in the last class session. I wrote out f f prime, f double prime, f triple prime, f fourth derivative, and then I saw a pattern of that, and then I put it back into, uh, I put it back into this particular formula right here. Well, actually, it's going to be right here. I put it back into this particular formula right here. Okay, let's move on to the next page.